Hello, hello everyone. So this is Toby and um, we did have a chat before with you. Uh, we kind of we kind of know each other, but really, really don't. Um, and, you know, certain things came up in the um, consultation when we were talking that I found interesting. And I thought that a lot of people would want to hear parts of your story. There's going to be a bit of spirituality, a bit of experience. So if you are interested in what, what Toby has to say, continue listening. Toby, would you like to um, tell them who you are, what you do, anything about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I live in London in the UK. Um, I won't tell you my age, um, you can guess that bit. Um, <laughs> I've got a, 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 a huge different type of background, so I work with children a little bit, I also do sort of sports, um, I write as well, so I have many, many different types of interest. Um, I was brought up in a village, so full of nature, and now obviously when you move closer to London, definitely a lack of that, which I do miss, yeah. But I'm glad I was brought up in nature because that allowed me to explore which i love exploring yeah that's sure. just a little starter that's a little starter yeah yeah that's a little, yeah that, that's like an intro um could you, intro. Yeah, yeah. could you touch i really want you to talk about your books a little bit because i think that could be useful for someone maybe someone is going to be interested and they'll check you out because i love what you do yeah so i had different ideas for books one was a more spiritual based book for adults Mm -hmm. That took me years to write, and that's what I'm working on now. But I had ideas for children, and I had ideas about these numbers because I always talk to children, I always have like um, make stories up as I go along. So I had the idea that this number went missing, and, and from that, I developed a story. Um, and then I sort of grew from that, and I made these numbers have characters, and they became numbers you can count on. So all these numbers were in chaos, and it was only because they were thoughtful or kind that they were chosen as a role model. For the next number to count on so gradually it became an order so i had to learn how to do all of that you know all the um making of the books and it was in lockdown last year at another three so it's to do with the environment to do with positive thinking to do with um um uh, really to do with sort of like having a, a better outlook for children you know so yeah that was the idea yeah and it's still growing yeah that's great that's great i love yeah. that um you know throughout um Throughout this work that I do, I've met a couple of people who want to talk about, you know, kids for, um, sorry, books for children. And it's not only about learning, let's say, numbers or language or whatever that would be. It's about that positivity and, and their mindset. And I think this is really important. So I think I'm going to leave the links below if you will be willing to share for people. Um, yeah, it'd be fantastic. Check it out. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So Toby, um, I'm really interested in a couple of things. You briefly touched on that. I didn't want to listen to everything that you had to say when we talked before. So I was like, we got to record this. Um, kind of run us through, you know, how you've changed over time and maybe um, your spirituality and, and what you realize now and maybe what you would want to say to your younger self. Well, it's funny because the younger self is where it all began. And I think I grew up slightly differently and, and that I questioned a lot of things. You know, I remember saying to my parents, I was like, quite deep as a child, I was like, well, what's the point of living if you're just going to die? You know, mm -hmm. which is quite a morbid thing to hear, but it's the truth. You know, because if you don't know that answer, then what's the point? You know, that's what I thought when I was about seven or eight. Yeah. Um, I, ne I never had the answer for it. I was just told, you know, not to talk about these sort of things, you know. And, but when I was young, I used to sort of have a sense of something or feel something around me. And it used to petrify me, really, because I didn't know what it was. I remember sitting in my living room and I used to feel something by the door all the time. But mm -hmm. it was only when I became older, I realized what it was. What was you know, it? So, well, that's the thing. So um, I was, um, this was a, a, an ex-girlfriend of mine. We were watching this film, Premonition, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I think it was Sandra Bullock. And suddenly we both turned towards where the door was in the living room. And she said, can you feel that? I said, yeah. I said, he's here, my guide. And he was by the door. So my guide never sort of um, shows himself directly, but he's always makes himself known. He doesn't sort of cross over mm -hmm. you know, too close, but I felt him behind me, but he, he has like, he would stay by the door. And I had that experience when I was younger all the time, but I didn't know if it was good or bad energy because it was just strong. 
Mm -hmm. You know, it was that, that, that sense of someone behind me or someone by the door when I was younger. And it used to petrify me. But when I got older, I actually um, found out a little bit more what it was. Yeah. Uh, Can I ask you a question? How did your parents react to the questions you asked them? Um, and when you told them that you can feel mm -hmm. maybe or see certain things? Um, I never really told them. You didn't? To be honest with you. No, no, no. Okay. And, you know, they, they're not into any of this. So I used to feel like the chi in my body when I was younger. I used to feel different feelings, but it was just, no, never. You kept it to all. yourself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I know a world. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I know a lot of parents, you know, um, if kids tell them that, hey, that's what's happening. That's what I'm seeing or feeling. They don't know what to do. They are not into spirituality and things like that. Uh -huh. So um, maybe if someone is dealing with a child like that, um, just listen to them, I'd say. Yeah, because I also deal with children, because um, I work a little bit in a school, and you get children that are very, very sensitive, you know, and they know an, aw an awful lot of things, but, and sometimes just to have an open conversation with the children, you know, I think that's one of the best things you can do, and just yeah. listen to them, and, and actually, because what they're telling you is how they feel, you know, so it's, you know, it's, it's important to listen, you know. For sure. That's from my background. Yeah. For sure. So what happened afterwards? So when I was growing up, so I was about eight or nine, and then um, then you go into the adolescent phase, you know, which isn't much fun. Very depressing, you know, oh, the world's going to end. Everything's very heavy. It was very dark, you know, for me. You know, my whole room was dark. Everything was dark. My life was dark. I never thought I'd live beyond 17. Very depressed, you know, and I didn't have any answers for that. You know, I was told when I went to the doctor that I should get out more. You know, that was really the, the, the answer. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, you asked to answer after the questions of life, really, which you don't get answered to, you know, especially when you're sensitive to something. Yeah. So then when I reached sort of early 20s, I then started to go into the bookshops and I saw the tarot cards. I saw bits about Buddhism. But it's almost like, oh, you can't touch that. It's like the occult, you know, yeah. something strange, you know, you know, you mustn't go anywhere near that. But I was, you know, but then I did, you know, I started to buy certain books, read them, started to meditate. And I went through a big shift in my early, when I was 20, 21, 22. And I remember going to see a psychic. I saw two psychics. One said to me that I was trying to be too nice and was trying to manipulate me on, on going off a spiritual path. Whereas the other one was very spiritual. She said, you need to make a choice whether you want to go left or right. So there were very two different psychics, you know, one was probably on the darker side, one was definitely towards the light, and I made a choice to, to become more spiritual. Can you tell yeah. us about why that person uh, tried to kind of take you out of the spiritual path? What was that about? Oh, it's funny, because when I had the reading, I remember holding my palms, out. it touched my palms, and I was shaking. I was like, I don't trust this person at all. And then some of the some some advancements they also made also, you know, proves the point really. You know, I was like, no, something is definitely not right here. When I saw this other lady, she could see my guys. She explained to me a lot of things, and she was her, it was just her energy was so different. You know, I felt I could trust her. That was a bit. I went with my gut feeling, and I was like, mm -hmm. I could trust this person. Yeah, and then I totally changed because I was having things come into my room at night. I felt things on my chest. I felt things around me. And she told me all of this. And then I changed. I used to imagine I zipped myself up in a sort of like a, a blanket, in an energy mm -hmm. blanket. And um, I used to have the light on when I was 21 because I was petrified at night. And then gradually I just became more and more calm, you know, and, and, and I used to do meditation, write things down in a book. And I just felt liberated, really. Yeah. So it seems like like you you made peace with who you are and what you're capable of in a way. Yeah, that was in that time. <laughs> Obviously, I changed again a number of different times. <laughs> so you're always sort of, yeah, you've always got to make peace with yourself because you're always evolving. You yeah, know? that's when I was that age. And then obviously, when you're working, you get a job, your mind shifts, you know, a little bit. So, yeah, yeah, you're always changing. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I know a lot of people go through this phase of darkness, especially when they're teens, when they are sensitive, yeah. when they kids. Mm -hmm. I, I went through the same phase. Like, literally, what you said, I can apply everything. Um, 
And then what you said, you know, you go to work and you find yourself doing all these jobs and it gets mm-hmm. kind of a bit more grounded in a way, but it's always in the back of your head, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So then I went to another shift and I was like, right, I want to come back to the spiritual side. And then I wanted to investigate, I went on all, all these ghost hunts, and, you know, and I wanted to find out about residual energy. I don't know if you've mentioned that before, but we had the residual energy and I remember this psychic said, okay, there's residual energy is the energy that's been there over a period of time. So mm-hmm. say if you had soldiers walking, that energy will still be present, you know? So when someone stands there, they'll feel like they want to walk, you know? And he said, okay, I want two volunteers. So I put my hand up. He said, okay, one of these energy is a residual energy. One of them is a spirit. So I stood behind these uh, stairs. I was, the stairs were behind me. And I felt someone walking down the stairs. And I said, that's a spirit. And he said, yeah, that's true. And whereas the other person wanted to stand like a soldier. And that was a residual energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I had a lot of experiences like that. So it helped me also to learn that when people are sensitive, you pick up this residual energy quite a lot. So if you go to a dark place, people get very depressed. You know, yeah. if you go to a light place, people feel uplifted and that's the residual energy. So if you're sensitive, that's what you're picking up. You know, yeah. really. So true. And it's, in, it's important to differentiate the two because some of the stuff you might be picking mm-hmm. up is not really yours to kind of bring it home, you know? Yeah, um, and yeah. I think the more you grow spiritually, the more you're able to kind of, like you said, put that blanket on you and not at night, mm-hmm. but just having your, you know, your protection, your boundaries in place. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, okay. So you had a time when you kind of tried to live the normal life, even though let's, let's kind of put it that way. And then you came back to it. So when old, how old were you when you came back to it? That was probably about 10 years later. So within those 10 years, I just went up and down a little bit because mm-hmm. obviously you're trying to, work and everything else you know and relationships everything you know yeah. you know affects you so yeah so then i just felt like i just wanted to explore it and just learn everything about it and and, and really understand my intuition whether it was correct or not mm-hmm. you know was i feeling something that was real you know if i felt that someone was there were they really there was it just my imagination you know and then you realize well actually that thing is real you know? yeah. yeah have you met more people on your path then um did you connect to people like you know the psychics or people that you visited before to kind of confirm certain things to you or were you on your own now no so then i went to a psychic group and mm-hmm. again if you if you go to one you've got to feel you'll go to one that you feel comfortable with you know that's what i would say so these people i, I felt comfortable with and then your feelings are validated so when i um, not see something, I can't visually see something, but I'll have it like a story because I like writing stories. So I get a picture of something and then I'll talk that picture through and I'm like, oh, that's a piece of information. You know, mm-hmm. and you give it to someone and you're thinking, I've got no idea if it's correct or not. And, you know, they would just say yes or no. But most of the time it's yes, you know. So that validates what you're actually feeling. So it's important if you have those feelings is to, once you get those validated, you realise well, it's not your imagination, it's actually real. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah i'm still That's learning that <laughs> still trusting what i feel <laughs> even though it's it could be black and white it's still trusting it you know over and over again yeah yeah, but, oh, yeah. A lot of people go through that. And I think um, I'm the same, like I'm doing this professionally. I always have it at the back of my mind, you know? It's like, I do trust myself much more now, but I think once you're in it, you will always always be questioning yourself in a way. But those practices Mm -hmm. are going to just basically help you tell, yeah, that's a fact, you know? Especially other people. If you give that piece of information, here you go, what is that about? And they're like, oh, everything Mm -hmm. ties in so nicely. Because see, this info is coming from your subconscious and that's why i just kind of wanted to touch on kids a bit more um why children why we have so many traumatic experiences when we are kids because everything that you tell a child um it goes straight into their subconscious because their you know logical part of brain is not developed that conscious part of brain is not developed just Mm. yet so it all sits down deep deep there and um, that's why I think a lot of people should be talking about that more. Jo- Joseph Moon, my friend who has a channel too, he worked with kids um, in London and he was like, oh my God, Brigitte, I can see through this kid. You know, it's, it's a sensitive child. There is nothing wrong with this kid. Um, and they would, you know, assume that, oh, there's nothing wrong with this child. No, they just see what 
adults don't see in a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of children. I have a lot of, lot of fun with some of the younger children. You know, I say I see a fairy or I see this and they just get involved. You know, they're so funny. But they definitely, <laughs> I think that's how they connect to you. Because if you're quite open, you'll find that, you know, children will come to you because you, they'll just drawn to your energy. Yeah. You know, because they know that you can see what they can see or what you can feel what they can feel. Yeah. You know, because you know, it's amazing. You know, you can just have a really open conversation with them as well. You That's know. for sure. And you'd be surprised what you learn with from children. Yeah. 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 So, right. So what happened next in your life? Where did you find yourself? So, yeah, it's more of the validation part of it. And um, I'm still learning, you know, in terms of like who, who I am and what I'm feeling and where I'm going. So I had a few different things happen when I go off track, I've had a couple of things happen to me. So I remember um, going to sleep at night and um, I heard this bang in the middle of the night and it didn't scare me. I was just like, oh, okay, you know, there's, there's something happened and I knew it was a spiritual thing, you know, no one's breaking in. Um, and when I woke up in the morning, there was these boxes I have on the wall. So they clip in and then they lock in really, really tight. So you can't get, get them off. Anyway, that been knocked off from when it was on the floor so I um took it off and I put it back on and I had to hit it with such force to break it off again that's how much force happened you know in the night and that was definitely I think my guide because the guide has also hit the door on my living room before when I've gone off track so it definitely makes me aware if I'm not not on track okay yeah so I've had so those sort of sides I've had other incidents where it's been I was working in this gym and for some reason I had this pen in my hand I don't know why anyway so it's off to my car like trundling along and I dropped the pen on the floor and I thought it's a bit odd and I heard really clearly in my ear that that's it said that's going to stop you having an accident and it was so clear and I picked it up and I thought okay all right you know whatever I don't know Anyway, so I was driving along and there was two cars in front of me and it's a really, really long stretch of road. It was dark and it's going through this, uh, this forest. And I like to drive quite quickly. All right, I'm, I'm sorry, that's my, that's, that's my little thing. Anyway, so I didn't overtake these cars because I didn't have the space. We came to a roundabout, these two cars went off and then suddenly I saw these brake lights go on and one of these huge trees had crushed, came down across the road, took the front of the first car out and another car and it took the, the front of that car out. No one was injured, but I would have been at that front if I didn't drop that pen. That you know? was about seconds, right? Like... Yeah, so literally those seconds, I would have been in front of those two cars, and wow. I would have definitely hit that, hit that, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love stories like that, honestly, you know, yeah. it's, it's amazing. And I think sometimes people might just kind of brush it off. Let's say if you're not that intuitive, um, and you can't hear, but you can just sense, oh, there is something behind this pen. I say track it because then you'll realize how everything ties in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's happened a few times, really. And that's why sometimes if something doesn't feel right or, or you're, there's obstacles, I think that's when you just need to slow down. Yeah. yeah, that's from my experience. You think, and actually, I would have been in that accident or this would have happened to me, you know. Mm -hmm. I like how you touched on those obstacles because usually those obstacles are preventing you from doing something or telling you like your guide, Hey, you're off track, look there now, you know, and you're trying yeah, to yeah, push yeah. a project or whatever that that is, just kind of take your focus somewhere else. Um, what other supernatural, let's put it that way, experiences that you um, have? Oh, I just remember things when I was just young as well. Just I've had, had so many. So I remember, when I was younger and I was driving, so I was driving back to the village and there was always a bend I got to, especially if it was late at night. And I used to feel someone in the back of my car. I'd be like, oh, petrified. So you're driving home, trying not to focus. And, um, and then suddenly it would just disappear and I'd forget about it. And it was only when I joined this psychic circle some 15 years later, that a random guy came up to me and he said, did you ever have someone in the back of your car when you were driving? And I was like, yeah. He said, oh yeah, it was a girl. I was like, was it? Just out of the blue. Mm -hmm. Never, ever told anyone about that. So, Did he elaborate yeah. on that? Um, why she was there? Because they usually no, I, come to us for yeah. some sort of help. 
I don't know what the help was, but I was doing about 50 miles an hour in the car. <laughs> so I don't know what help she was going to get. But um, I, no, he didn't. I don't think he, he just knew there was someone in the back of my car. Mm -hmm. So I, I tried to look up um, recently, actually, where there was an accident there before or something had happened, but I couldn't really find anything. So I don't live there now, but maybe one evening it'd be quite nice to travel back there and just see what I feel. You know, that'd yeah. be quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. You know, when it comes to beings, entities, you know, and lost spirits, and there are so many of them around us. And I love how you touched on that because um, they everywhere. Like if you had these, if you could have like a, I don't know, machine to scan the environment, you'd see a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But they hear, I don't want people to be scared of, the, of it. And I know it might be at the very beginning, especially when you're young, but they all hear, they kind of trying to find their way back home in a way. Some of them don't really realize, you know, that there is light mm -hmm. and they're super lost. And that's how they appear to us throughout time. You know, hey, I'm around. Hey, I might need something from you. And um, I don't know if you tried that yourself. But for me, when I had, a, I think it was a month ago or so where a spirit came through for help. Um, mm -hmm. I had a really... Um, um, weird dream but that dream was kind of repeating itself throughout time and I was like listen I gotta f figure this out you know what's happening behind the scenes and I just sat down closed my eyes and I just wanted for it to speak or tell me telepathically whatever it needs to tell me and the dream interestingly was that I couldn't find my way back home and straight away that spirit goes that's how it feels like for me when I did find my way back home when I opened the apartment door um, it was cold and damp. Everything was dark, cold and damp. And then the spirit goes, that's how it feels like for me here. Like I need help. I need to get out of here. So I think instead of, you know, and I know it's difficult for some people if they're terrified of this, instead of kind of trying to run away from it, now when you, when you already, um, you know, kind of spiritually evolved, it would be uh, it would be good to just kind of try and understand why. And there's mm -hmm. gonna, and you love stories. You're going to get a lot of stories. Mm. You know, <laughs> it's a, you kind of have to protect yourself in a way, but I do it mentally, you know, no, nothing yeah, can yeah, touch yeah. me. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to mess with you. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. some of them are tricksters. Some of them are really tricksters. I um, kind of have to deal with them different ways, but um, there are a lot of stories you might hear. And um, I know not everyone knows how to get rid of those energies, you know, and then those lost spirits and stuff. But there, I think there is a lot of information out there how to do it. Mm -mm. When I went on these, uh, I call them ghost hunts, you know, because there were all these different types of places you go in at night time and there was different, definitely different types of spirit that, that was there. There were some which weren't particularly nice, but then the majority, there's just, they're just in a story. Something's happened mm -hmm. to them and they don't know they've gone, you know, they, mm -hmm. it, it's a different sort of feeling and they're quite inquisitive. You know, they want to know a little bit about you as well. Yeah. yeah. But, but that, um, I think, yeah, like you said, if you're ready for that, then that's something that people can do. Yeah. But I, I never sort of feel like, you know, I don't need to get the sage out or anything like that. I just feel like it's my mental, yeah. this is who I am. This is my barrier. And it's just like, well, you know, these are about my boundaries. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm willing to do, but you're not crossing over this way to me. Yeah. You know, that's how I feel. Yeah. yeah, and that's very true. Um, you know, I remember someone asked a question. He's, um, he's very spiritual, this guy, and he does hypnosis stuff. Um, and someone asked a question on Instagram saying, hey, I feel energy is around me. It's chasing after me in a way. You know, it's bothering me now. Will Sage help? And, and the guy goes, do you really think that a piece of, of you know, of oh. some kind of grass is going to help you? Like it can kind of help you feel a bit better it's not going to be feeling as present but it's it's there and i don't know if you have you have you taken interest in entities and how that stuff goes in what, what entities sort of and beings um so the attachments oh the soul attachments um i've looked into a little bit yeah mm -hmm. because I've, I've witnessed someone who i think may have had one because they just weren't themselves they, yeah, they were just someone else. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know. I can't touch on this because since we started talking about these things, um, maybe it's helpful for someone. But so we have seven layers of auric field, right? 
like it's literally it goes around you so the closer the attachment is you know it's almost like it eats through those layers um the more it can be impactful in your life like you said people might start being uh, not themselves so they might even start looking a bit differently this happened with my friend a couple of times where um there was an attachment next to him um, that was kind of close to him but that attachment loved um drinking um, alcohol and parties and stuff so it would be much more present around the time when he'd be uh, in in a pub and um, it somehow took away the free will of that person after like three drinks and he couldn't stop himself he's like i, I don't know mm -hmm. like this isn't me and if you looked at the pictures um it's not him it's a different mm -hmm. face. It's a very weird, different face. And it would cause a lot of troubles, you know, for him. So we do have, we all have attachments. This is, com you know, this is normal in a way. Um, but some of them you don't really feel because they, they're quite, you know, far away. But any attachments should be removed because they live off your energy, right? And some cases, like you said, um, people not being themselves, um, I think should be looked at in a way, but there's nothing to be scared about. It's just for you mm -hmm. to live a comfortable life and also listen to what that spirit has to say and kind of tell them, hey, you know, go, go up and uh, mm -hmm. continue your soul's evolution because they can't, because they're here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you have any other experiences oh. like that? Sorry. Oh, uh, the one I was going to say was um, in terms of sort of like um, the spirits and other bits. Um, it was a really nice dream I had. So this was uh, a few years ago. So I had my grandfather who always passed away. So he's, he's already he's gone. And um, his brother, so my great uncle was still alive. And I really saw him. And I definitely, definitely never dreamt of him before. Anyway, one, one night I remember dreaming that my great uncle came walking towards me. And then I turned and he went past me and I saw my grandfather there. And he went to my grandfather. I was like, okay you know i just woke up i was like okay you know i sometimes dream of my grandparents the next day during the day my father phoned me up and said oh you know your great uncle i said yeah he said oh you know he's died he died last night and i was like i oh, know because he's with my granddad now yeah you know? he came to take him with him yeah so my granddad was waiting for him that's his brother and i'm like well, there you go so they're, they're both safe you know both looked after so I, I never, I wasn't shocked by that because I've experienced things when I was younger and it was just like, oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's nice yeah. that they came and showed me that. Yeah. So it gives me, um, when I talk to people about death, I said, you know, death, you know, don't, don't get too scared about death. You know, <laughs> life is hard, I think, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's for you sure. Know? Like, so don't uh, get too scared about it, you know. Yeah. Only the body dies. The soul, the soul doesn't yeah, die. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we reincarnate really yeah. to learn. That's that's why mm -hmm. we're here for, to learn and to kind of sort ourselves out in a way. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I think people should enjoy challenges a bit more because we, we're here for that. We're here to learn, grow, you know, and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. Different yeah, yeah, bodies, yeah. same soul. I think if you look at it, if you look at it in a physical aspect, you think there's always going to be a winner and loser, you know. You know, you think, oh, you know, I'm losing this, I've gained that. But if you look at it from a more spiritual point of view, you think, well, you know, you're, gonna, you're changing. You're going to see the world differently. You're going to feel different, you know, and that's in your control because the rest of it, you don't have any control really. You know, anything that you do have can disappear. Like with COVID, you know, people had businesses, they've now gone, mm -hmm. you know, anything, you know. But I think if you look at it, like you said, like a game, you know, you're, you're going to, it's, it's more fun as well. You know, some lessons are easier, some are definitely harder. But um, sure. it, I think the more you let go as well and you, you have a realisation, well, actually, I'm actually more than what I think I am as well, you know. Because mm -hmm. if you just live in the means of your body, you're quite restricted. But if you live beyond that, actually, it's a big world out there. You're part of something huge, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So are you connecting with people um, who are spiritual? Do you have like your own, I call them soul tribe currently? Oh yes, your soul tribe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I'll, I'll be in your soul tribe. Yeah, and, um, already. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, and then I think um, you get given people as well who you can help. You know, so I chat to some people, some people a bit down. I'm like, oh, I see the sun. I see the sun behind you. I said, don't worry, you know, or this has happened or 
someone's loved one has passed away or I've done a bit of Reiki as well. So in ties in my massage, you can give information to people. So I think sometimes you get given people that you can help. Mm-hmm. You know? And also sometimes I get help. You know, if I had a client, she's an elderly lady and it's like, wow, it's, it's like, the whole of heaven's talking to you you know she's giving you advice she says don't worry just relax if it's meant to be it will come for you and it's like this isn't this lady talking to me you know <laughs> you know it's not yep oh i love you that know. you touched on this because spirits yeah, yeah. do speak through people mm-hmm. i love that yeah yeah many many a true word i think as well and with children you're like oh that's just exactly what i want to hear mm-hmm. you know it's amazing you know yeah. And it's also, um, I want to touch on that too, where if spirit talks through someone or if you communicate with your spirit guide or ancestor, um, I don't know if you've noticed, Toby, but they, they're not here to tell you if you should take this job or what's your life path. They're going to give you exactly those, you know, sentences that you can think about or those, like what you said, you know, what's yours, what's that is going to be yours in a way. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. very simplified, yeah. but it makes so much sense and it makes you feel mm-hmm. a certain mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. Um, some people think that, you know, guides or ancestors are here to give us all answers. No, they're just here watching you. They're going to help you whenever you need help, but the answers will be very simple. And mm-hmm. at the same time, very impactful. Mm. It's awakening. You're like, oh, yeah. I did. yeah, yeah. It's just like, yeah. It's not like sometimes I think I wish I just had the answers. I've never really had it sort of like spelled out to me. Oh, this is what you want to do. This is. It's not like that. But what I also get is like people turn up at the right time, so you know you're on a certain path. It's like actually that person has turned up at the right time, or. Or, for instance, if I switch the radio on and I'm, I'm frustrated, I used to hear um, Take That, and they, there's a song called Patience, and I was like, click that on every time. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's always patience. That's my lesson. My life lesson is about patience. Letting go. Must let go. You know, I had a dream about letting go. Just the beginning of this COVID, so a lot of things were going on. And uh, I dreamt I was falling from a plane. And then I was told, don't worry, you've got a parachute. So the parachute opened and I just fell down. I had three dreams with a parachute. Just really? saying, let go. Yeah. And then recently, because um, we had the, a conversation about control, because that's one of my uh, little devils, you know, mm-hmm. a devil controlling me. And I've had a dream of um, going on a roller coaster. And this, you have no control on a roller coaster. You know, you basically sit in it and let gravity do its thing. And you've got no yeah. control whether you go left or right. And it was just like, just let go. Just, you're, you're safe. That's what I kept feeling is you're safe. Don't worry. Just let go and enjoy it. If it falls, it's, it's fine. It's, you, you're, you're taken care of. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's been true. So the last year, you know, everything sort of worked itself out. And I haven't really done anything about that. It's just fell into place. Yeah. yeah. So you stopped kind of pushing in a way, right? You recognize that and you're like, okay. I haven't, I haven't to stopped mentally. totally. I'm, I'm still learning that bit. But, you know, I think there's a time, it's a recognition. It's like, actually, if something is too difficult, then yeah. just hold back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I believe you've got to push. And other times when things just don't work out, I think that's when you just need to listen a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. So, okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Mm. So imagine you are, um, I want to kind of t- imagine you, your younger self, but especially when you are going through depression, you know, and those dark times, what would you yeah. have told your younger self? Um, funny, because I put on this um, blog thing or something when I was setting up this uh, thing for my this author profile, and it said, what, what word would you give someone? And I just thought, you're never alone. That's what I put. You're never alone. And that could be viewed in there's always people there to help you or spiritually. Mm-hmm. But I think it's when those you're in those dark times, you feel like you're not loved. I think that's that's the that's the point of it. But actually the truth is not like that. You know, like that story where um, um I'm terrible at remembering some stories, when someone's walking along the beach and there's only one set of footprints, mm-hmm. and they, you know the, the person says, Where were you there, God? It's like, well, they're my footprints, I was carrying you. You know, so it's like, actually, if you, if you close the love off, it's not that the love isn't there or you're not being loved. 
I think it's your own self that's closing it off because you don't feel worth worth it. You don't feel like you're worthy of love. And I think it was that bit when I was young, I didn't realize, I thought it was the whole universe conspiring against me, but it's not, it's not like that. It's actually, mm. you're just, you're just closed. So it's not, it's not the universe, but it's actually you just, just closed off. But I would say to that self is even though you can't see the next step, just keep walking. It will get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've got to walk blindly, I think, you know, sometimes in your life. But um, I think if, if you know that actually there's, there's that love there, that's actually really supporting you the way through and try and open yourself a little bit to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's, that's really powerful. And especially, you know, um, right now, a lot of teenagers are going through that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, social media pressure and comparisons yeah, yeah. and all of that stuff. Um, mm. I did that myself, you know, at one point when I was younger. Um, You're still young. Like, You're still young. I'm younger than I look. <laughs> uh, I'm older than I look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... In a way, you know, I, when you were telling this story, I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I would have told myself too. You know, depression and, and kind of asking yourself these questions that not, other people are not asking about why are we here, you know, why am I seeing this? Why, why is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's super powerful. Just take it one step at a time. It's such a simple sentence, but I think it's, it's so there is so much more to it in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm. So and I was quite have... responsible. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I was quite a responsible um, adolescent as well. You know, I always feel like whenever we went out, you know, there'll be like someone drinking who I knew. I remember there was these couple of girls who were drinking, and they crashed out on the floor. And it would be me that would be there, you know, picking them up. It's always me, and I kept thinking, am I am I cursed for being nice? You know, <laughs> what was it? You know. That, that was, I just kept feeling that. It's like, I'm cursed with being nice. I just want a normal life. I can't have a normal life, you know. You know, so I had that sort of feeling as well, being responsible. You yeah. Know, feeling, yeah. But I think, you know, I had the feeling of the, of the duty, of, you know, of being responsible, which I think can be a burden if you're allowed to be, you know, because you don't want to be used either, you know. But yeah. yeah, I always felt like I was the one, yeah, picking up the pieces for others, I think. I think that's the first sign that you're here to somehow impact or help other people in a way. But you just have to keep your boundaries clear. You yeah, know, yeah, straight. yeah, yeah. But we all have to learn that, I guess. You know, we have to have zero boundaries in order to learn what that is. <laughs> but there's always learning. If you're doing something in business or in relationship, it's all the time. Yep. You think, actually, I should have said that. Or actually, I should have asked that money back. Or I should have done this. There's this countless countless things yeah that's always ongoing sure. yeah, yeah that's for sure you know it reminded me of a of a story too where you were talking about um helping people in a party i remember when i was uh, i was turning 25 my friend was like we gotta celebrate because i wouldn't want to celebrate my birthdays and she was like we gotta celebrate and uh, i was like okay cool and then people started gathering and i told everyone I said, listen, I'm always the one who is taking care of other people. I can drink a lot, but for me, I can switch it off. So I'm not going to be drunk, you know, that kind of sober <laughs> kicks in. So I would be responsible for everyone. And on my birthday, I said, listen, I'm not responsible for anyone. I'm getting drunk. I'm letting it go. <laughs> Seven hours later, who is taking care of everyone? Me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same it's the same all the time but i think taking it as signs in a way uh, you know why this is happening uh, but in a good way not why me but like why is this happening mm -hmm, mm -hmm, why do mm -hmm. i want to help people answers a lot of questions also connected i think to your path your mission in this life too mm -hmm. but when you're you have... 17 and 18 it's it's not easy you just yeah. want to just relax a little bit yeah, yeah for sure do you mm. think you already uncovered parts of your mission um, I think I'm going through a shift in that, to be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not quite sure where I'm going, but um, it's not just about writing because it's about the message I put in the books. So the, the, the spiritual book that I wrote, this was from a dream. And uh, this is why I think I mentioned before. And um, it was to do with people being liberated from their thinking. So, yeah. So that book I'm actually sort of 
I wrote it, it was so huge. And now I've got to try and condense it down a little bit because you're writing and your emotions coming out. Mm-hmm. And in the past, I would have never have cut any words out because I'm like, oh, but now it's like, well, if it's not necessary, then I'll just chop it out. It doesn't bother me. But um, yeah, so um, I'm not quite sure what my mission is now, but I feel like I'm just drawing people in. So mm-hmm. my website for children, because it's to do with my the children's books about growth mindset about positive thinking i'd like other role models to actually be part of the actual books as well you know or, or my website so when people visit my website they're seeing other role models especially children you know that's what i'd like yeah that's nice i like that a lot i know i don't know if you've noticed by the past couple of years uh, maybe this is just you know um tribe coming to find me but i'm meeting a lot of people who um, are focused on children and and their spirituality, their beliefs, you know, and then their sensitivity. And I'm really happy to see that because I don't think we had it, you know, 10 years ago as mm-hmm. much as we do have it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've got another idea for children's books and it's another spiritual one. So, um, yeah, that involves fairies. And um, I love but, yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I think, well, there's so many children being born into this world for a reason, you know, and they're very sensitive. And, and what I like about children, you know, I talk to them about the environment and they'll, they'll say, well, why aren't we doing this? It's like, well, this is adults for you. So we can talk to adults, but I think children, they're very innocent and they, you know, they, they, they're moving into this world. They can help change this world as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. For sure, that's the responsibility we all have, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have your own? Sorry, I didn't. I don't think we talked about that. My own children. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. no. You have the children just, of just the world. Children of the world. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Um, I was always told when I was younger, when I was um, sort of psychic, she said, "Oh, I'm, I'm good with animals and children." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. I, I suppose because because when I was with working with these children recently, one of the children came to me and she said, um, "Why do you work with children?" And I said, um, "Oh, you know, I just like telling stories. I like educating, blah blah blah." And then she was really innocent. She said, "Is it because you don't want to grow up?" I said, "That's probably the case." <laughs> and it's true, you know. I don't want to. I don't want to get a fixed mindset. No, like that's when you stop having fun. Oh yeah, I don't want to have. I, I want to keep having fun. I want to keep dancing. I want to keep doing stuff. You know, I want to do jokes. I want to put wigs on. I want to do all of that still. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, you remind me of my friend. Like that's why I appreciate him so much because he has his inner child with him at all times. You know, sometimes when, when you have a gathering and everyone is a bit like, we'll just start in the evening and he's the one who can just break the ice. And Mm-mm. we all have that in a child, but he just kind of brings it out of everyone else because he's so like, let's live now. Why, yeah, why are you fearful? Yeah. You know, don't care what other, other people are thinking. I love mm-hmm. that. Is there yeah, anything yeah. else Toby, that you have forgotten to maybe share or a story? that stuck with you. I know there, there's a lot of stories probably that you have at the back of your head. It might be difficult to remember right now, um, but maybe stories similar to uh, visitations, um, dream space. Oh, I, I love know. dreams. Oh, I could talk about dreams. I love dreams. I had dreams ever since I was young. So my favorite dreams when I was younger, I used to sort of just make gold. I love that. So I just go and make a whole pile of gold and then boom, and then fly off, you know. And even now, I just, I, I see when I, when I dream, every night I dream, I can dream of like an ancient city or, you know, just anything, you know. But I've had some visitations, um, like I see my grandparents quite a bit and I'll talk to them. Um, sometimes I've had sort of like a, a darker things come to visit me, especially when I was younger, you know, and then I'll just chop off their head. That's how I was, you know. <laughs> Did like, you? That's coming off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also sometimes I can feel it and it's like it wants to sort of come to you, the negative yeah. thing. So what I learned from is actually this negative thing, all it is is really a reflection of your own fear. So that has no control over you unless you allow it to have control over you. And if you're afraid, that's the greatest thing that you can give it. 
But if you're not afraid, and then you just think, well, actually, you know, I, I, I don't want your energy, mm -hmm. you know. And also you think, well, actually, I've, I've worked quite hard on myself. You're not just going to take, take what I've done, you know. Yeah. You're going to have to earn it too, you know. I may not be perfect, but you're going to have to walk the same path I have. You can't just come here and, and take it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I've had those sort of dreams, and I've had sort of presents come in in the night. When I was younger, I used to feel something come in. Yeah, even, you know, some people have experience where they get a thing on their chest. Now they talk it in terms of science as in like, um, I don't know, brain sleep or something that your body wakes up before your brain, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. But I'm telling you, that thing is definitely on there, yeah. you know, and you can feel it. And throughout history, they've done pictures about it and different cultures have ex they talked about it. Dream par yeah. paralysis, is that what we're yeah, Dream about? paralysis, yeah, yeah. You wake up and you're like... Mm -hmm. Oh, Did you so you experienced that yourself, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, quite a number of times, and I know friends have as well. And quite a lot of the people I've known that have had that experience are those that are quite good people. And it's almost like it's testing you, it's like mm -hmm. I'm going to take that from you, I'm going to take the goodness out of you. Mm -hmm. And I, whenever I was in that position, I'm like, You're not taking it. And I used to pray or used to just say, No, you're not having it, you know, and mm -hmm. then that energy will just go, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dream paralysis is no joke, um, especially, you know, uh, when people, when someone hasn't experienced dream paralysis, it's quite difficult mm. to explain to someone how impactful mm. and how difficult it is, you know, to kind of sometimes get rid of that energy. And especially, mm -hmm. I don't know if you have noticed that in your surroundings, but it happens when people are either already sensitive, younger, I'd say around teenage mm -hmm. years or... or mm somewhere along those lines but the more you grow mm. um, it kind of fades away yeah so i haven't had it it was it was when i was going through a transition really so you know when my bedroom was all painted black and that sort of side of it i had quite quite a few times but really since then not really occasionally i get the odd thing entering my dream but it's it's almost just to test me out and then i'll i'll i feel much more powerful against it so i don't have a problem mm -hmm. you know but definitely when I was younger, I'd have, I'd have it a lot more. And it's, it's no joke. Yeah. It's not just that. It's a sense of doom, an ominous presence. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just that you can't move your body. It's not like, oh, I can't move my body. It's not that. It's there's something there and it's stopping you. And it's taking yeah. something from you, you know. Yeah. Did you have any um, physical attack? Let's say if you woke up, you have a scar no. or... No, because funny enough, because when I was going on these ghost hunts, people used to get poked, people used to get their hair pulled. I would never have that. And I always felt, because my guide has like a, oh, I've got to tell a really good story. Yeah, I got a point. So, um, yeah, I always felt like I had a, a sword. So I would go, I don't mind being the first one in and the last one out, because I just was like, no, you're mm -hmm. not touching me. Mm -hmm. And there was once where there was sort of, they used to do sort of demonic worshipping, so it was a really dark place. And um, their faces were um, skeletons and they had red eyes. And I wasn't the only one who seen it. Lots of people saw it. And um, they were pushing us all in. And then the, the psychic said, you know, this is what's happening. So I said, we need to step back then. You know, we need to, you can't allow that to win. You know, that's the key to it. You know, it's actually yeah. good. It's much, much stronger than anything that's dark. Yeah. So I never had any experience of it being touched, but other people definitely did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there is so much more to it than um, science can, you know, prove oh, as yeah, usual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, if, you, if you're sceptical, I know some places, especially if you're in London, I'll tell you, take to some places, lock the door, and then you come out, you know, in the morning, and then tell me what you think. Oh, yeah. I want to ask you, um, there is, I think, um, a psychic school in London. Have you been there? I'm not sure how, the College of Psychics, something along those lines. Have you been um, there? There was, there's a place outside London I've been to, it's called Stansted um, Mount Pitchett, which is near where I was brought up. And I think they're the Arthur Finley College. Yep, I'm that's sure where that's I'm aiming it. to go to. So have you yeah, been? Yeah. Well, funny, I went to a dinner there when I was younger and it's a, I've been there for that, but not to the actual thing, even though it's really relatively closely where I used to live. Um, but yeah, it definitely had a different feel to it. Yeah, even when I was there, you know. And I wasn't into wow. that spiritual stuff. It was just like different feeling. Yeah, that's Arthur Finney College. Yeah, just outside London. 
yes, if you flew into Stansted uh, Airport, it would be 10 minutes drive from there. Yeah. yeah, I checked it out. So I planned the whole trip there and um, ah. COVID happened. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you have and to let me know. It's only up the road. Yeah. yeah, and funny fact, you know, I lived in London for 10 years. I just came back uh, last year. But mm -mm. Um, it's I started kind of finding these places after I came back home which is oh. super strange for me. And uh, yeah, yeah. the thing is like, I want to travel at all times. I want to visit that place, the other place, Barca, London, mm -hmm. meet people, you know? Um, and I think maybe that's part of it. So I can, you know, continue traveling in a way. Um, mm -hmm. And when I was still in architectural field, um, that's when I looked at in Psychic College up. But I was like, there's something more. I think there's something bigger. And then I found out about Arthur Finley College. I think mm -hmm. they based, um, they focusing on mediumship, aren't they? Yeah, I think it's mediumship. Oh, I've been to a um, physical mediumship before. How did so that, that is, I think, yeah, because it's pitch black, so you can't see anything. But, um, you know, people say, well, any, they could have done anything. But this guy had um, this top on, and it was sort of, they, they used these uh, zip ties to tighten it up. Anyway, mm -hmm. at the end of the show, at the end of the thing, that was on back to front. Things were flying through the air. This guy was walking around about nine foot tall, tapping people on the head and his hand was like that. So, um, yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. Just totally different experience. Totally you ran through experience. the story so quickly. I was like, what? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I get excited. When I get excited, I just go, Phew. okay. I'll start at the beginning. So this man, he does the, um, uh, the physical uh, mediumship. So they use what's called, um, I think it's ectoplasm like on the, um, the original um, Ghostbusters, you know, they get mm -hmm. this ectoplasm stuff. So I think the ectoplasm is quite sensitive to light, so they do it in the dark. So this spirit uses this man's ectoplasm to actually push out into a physical form. That's what's called physical mediumship. And then if this, this man, this, this physical being now, would, was walking around and he was, he was talking and he was about nine foot tall. Yeah, it was amazing. And the physical mediumship, when he sort of came back, his chair had moved about 10 feet further forward. Um, his top was on back to front and was still uh, zipped up at the back. It was zipped up because it was zipped up here. It's like a cloak. Mm -hmm. And that had somehow come off and turned itself around and gone on there. So he was telling us that lots of other things happened. You know, sometimes his chair's on the side and, you know, lots of strange things. Lights were flying around when I was there. Yeah. Yeah, wow. it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, really interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, are you planning to um, to go and visit the Arthur Finley College again? Yeah, I think with this with COVID's finished. Yeah, I'd be like be interested to explore it and see what they have there because I'd like to sort of move a little bit more into that. Um, because there's a, maybe this is something you could also sort of um, help me with a little bit. Because you have the sort of the psychic part, the, the bit where you're sort of picking up people's energy. Then you have the medium shit where you're, mm -hmm. you know, picking up more of the spirit side, mm -hmm. you know. So that's, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to move into that. But I don't feel like the psychic bit is, is enough. It feels like I'm, I'm picking probably stuff up as well. Yeah, because you, you have a lot of potential to be a medium, you know, based on your stories already. And, um, and I think it's not only about, regarding Arthur Finley College, it's not about, you know, oh, I'm going to go and book this session or this course with them because I want to be a medium. It's, I think it's so much more to it because they have shamans come over there, you know. Mm. There are so many different practices. I know there was one lady um, who kind of went through the whole experience. She said, what well, part of the practice was they would have like canvas and they'd work in in pairs and mm -hmm. she when she painted she had to think of a hidden word in that in that artwork and then let's say so i painted something i would show it to you and you'd have to guess what's kind of coded in that painting so it's all about that mm. you know um Ooh, i like that i think it's more than mediumship there is a lot of other things yeah, yeah. um to it that you can take from so when I was in this uh, psychic group, sometimes we'd do things like they would hide colour bits of paper inside an envelope and um, you've got to guess what colour they are, you know, but we know like uh, colour has, uh, has a vibration. So we just pick up a vibration, really. Mm -hmm. um, other bits will have to 
create a story or a, a message from someone from something random. So someone will give us like um, a, a flower. And from that, we'll have to give a, a message from that flower. Maybe much like sort of tarot reading, really. You know, obviously you've got the meaning of the tarot cards, but you're picking up the, the vision, the picture from it as well. It, what is actually explaining the energy, the story behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, love, I love that. I like making a story up from something. Thank you for sharing your story. Is there anything else that you haven't touched on? It'll probably pop into my head later on. Yeah. But yeah, that's just a sort of a broad sort of outline of what i've experienced yeah thank you yeah that was awesome that was awesome so thank you for sharing your stories and guys i don't know if you if you want to reach uh, toby um i'm gonna give maybe your i don't know email whatever you're willing to share i find that you know interviews like that might be uh, important for people who don't know what's happening you know and you went through yeah. this or mm -hmm. who need advice so yeah thank you toby for um sharing you your stories me. and maybe you're gonna have another chat in the future uh, and for now we're saying bye yep take care thank bye. you bye